let the peace, love, and blessings of Jehovah God and His Christ be upon the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. Oneness, the secret behind Christ's success. Everlasting gospel delivered to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of Truth, leader Olumba, Olumba, Obu, the supernatural teacher. First lesson, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 7. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Second lesson, John chapter 7, verses 16 to 17. Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. Golden text, John chapter 12, verses 44 to 46. Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me, Believe it not on me, but on him that sent me. And he that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. I am come a light into the world, that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. Quote, Brethren, what I want to reveal to you in this gospel is about oneness. It is like everybody has been reading the Bible without understanding its intricacies and so no single man is able to comprehend the words spoken by our Lord Jesus Christ. But I want to expound a little of it to you. It is for this reason you are told that anyone who testifies about himself is seeking his personal glory but he who seeks the will of him who sent him the same is truth and when you cast a look upon the entire universe you will discover that they are seeking their glory and it is for this reason that they all fail that is why you contest with others and it is the reason you go about boasting after helping another person all you try to do is to look for your glory and not for that of God because of this all your endeavors are limited within a short period the word of our Lord Jesus Christ is like a chain and it is binding on every person in the whole world because it is the word of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Indeed it is the word of the Godhead. That is why this word abides forever because it is not Christ who spoke this word per se, but God himself. That is why he shouted with a loud voice saying, All those who believe in me are not believing in me, but the one who sent me. All the words were spoken by God through our Lord Jesus Christ, and anyone who saw Christ, saw God. Those who rejoiced in Christ were rejoicing in God. And even when you gave him something, you were, giving, you were giving God. Also, if Christ has given you anything, know that God gives such a thing to you. Christ does not abide alone, and he equally does not speak alone. He does not do anything alone. The Father accomplishes everything. When he moves or when st stationary, it is the Father who does both. Therefore, there is no way 
he could do without the Father. In your own case, it is different because you are given to uttering vain words. There is no occasion when our Lord Jesus Christ is over joyous or over angry. He does not receive praises from any person and is not equally insulted by any because everything belongs to the Father. It is the Father who speaks the word and that is why whether you accept his words or not, he is not worried if you will come to the realization that you did not bring anything into this world and will not equally go away with anything, then you will be free indeed. It is the Father who gives and he equally takes away. He sees, he knows, he works, he thinks and does everything. When you know this, you will abide in peace. Once you know that you come from the Father and that you are in Him, that anywhere you go is with you, then you will be free and will be covered. Anybody who receives you, receives the Father. And anyone who refuses you, refuses the Father. Anyone who makes trouble with you, is doing so directly to the Father. And because our Lord Jesus Christ knew and attributed everything that happened to him as being done by the Father, this therefore turned to be the secret behind his success. Today you are failing because you do not acknowledge God. You take your decisions, make your plans, and go about doing everything in your own name. And should you give out something to someone and he pretends not to be aware, you will not hesitate going to ascertain whether he has really received it or not. This is because you are seeking your glory. This is accountable to the problems plaguing the entire universe for nobody seeks the glory of God. A local adage has it that when the cause of issue is forgotten, the issue is distorted. You have totally forgotten that you did not come into the world with anything. And is this not why you are contracting problems? Once you arrive here on the earth plane, you start laying claims on things you equally bet on your chest that you have built a house and own it. You claim ownership of land and children and start showing off because of this tribulation and lamentation has befallen you. On the other hand, if you realize that you came from the Father and that everything comes from Him and belongs to Him, hence His mighty wings will cover you. If you are such a person, whether you are abused or your words are not received, you will continue to rejoice in Him because you know you were sent by the Father and that anything you are doing is being done by the Father directly. Once you put this very gospel into practice, you will have eternal peace. That is why I want to really explain what oneness is and its attendant benefits. Spiritual Chorus when you bring God closer, when you bring God closer to yourself, you will surely emerge 
a winner in the battle. Brethren, have you heard that? But the moment you are born into the world, you started doing everything on your own and seem to forget all about God. This will make you roam about a sheep without a shepherd if you do not place God first in your life. What do you think will be your end? Right from today, if you come to the realization that you and the Father are one, and you kneel down and kowtow before the Father, He will come to you and whatever and wherever you go to, He will go with you. In fact, whatever thing you do, He will do it for you because you have recognized and have acknowledged Him as the doer of all things and as you being one with Him. Since He is the one who sends you on an errand, He will go before you to accomplish that task for you. Once you believe that you and the Father are one, you will have peace and nobody will ever think of harming you for the Father is your great shelter. But once you do anything and lay claim of doing it on your own, then you will fail completely. Since you are seeking your own glory, you cannot accomplish anything. Recall the case of our Lord Jesus Christ. Anything he did, he attributed it to the Father and this was the secret behind his success in everything he did. Adam made this mistake first by saying that he was alone and now all of you are repeating the same mistake. If you are alone, you cannot do anything. But if you embrace God, anything you want to do, He will accomplish it for you. Let the first lesson be read again. First lesson, First Timothy chapter 6 verse 7. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Brethren, ponder over these words. In the whole world, who came in with anything, and in the same token, even if you live for thousands of years, when you will be leaving this planet, what will you go with? If this is the whole truth, what then is the need for your struggling? You do not sleep, you do not keep quiet, and you do not even rest day in, day out, and all the time you are found very busy doing one thing or the other, whereas you embrace, whereas if you embrace the Father as Christ did, you will, however, stop to bother yourself over anything because you will realize there is nothing which the Father cannot do. The trouble plaguing the whole world emanates from this lack of knowledge. You were born blind, without wife or husband or money or clothes or houses, cars and all these material things. It is the Father who owns wisdom, He owns vision, He owns men and women, He owns money, he owns cars, all the houses, and anything you can think of. Heaven and earth and the fullness therein belong to the Father. The moment you present yourself before the Father, 
know that you have gone astray. You claim to be what you are not. And because of this, you quarrel, you tell lies, you steal, you concoct and do all sorts of things to achieve your claims. Your effort, you should know, is in vain because you came into the world with nothing and will leave with nothing. When Christ was here and was proclaiming that the Father was the greatest, he succeeded. And so, today, you put this gospel into practice, you will be a free man, for he is in front and behind you. If one sees you, it is not you per se, but the Father. And if one fails to recognize you, it is the Father who is not recognized. Whatever thing is done to you is being done to the Father. So do not be perturbed, for you are only a servant, and as such, should not speak in parables. Even your earthly father, if you start disobeying him or making yourself his superior, you will not fail to encounter problems. All the things you do are being done by the father because you could not speak, nor see, nor walk, nor do anything without the father. The moment you attribute everything you do to the Father, He will glorify you at the end. What I want you to understand is the technique Christ has used in overcoming the world, which is oneness with the Father. Right from today, keep to the injunctions of the Father, follow after Him, and testify about his glory, then you will succeed. The glory of Christ is eternal, whereas you are only short-lived because you seek your personal glory. Read the second Bible lesson so that you may know what you are expected to do. Let our second lesson be read again. Second lesson, John chapter 7, verses 16 to 17. Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but is that but his that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. Brethren, when the Jews saw how Christ, a man whose parents they knew, and also who never attended any conventional school, was teaching learned people, they marveled and asked where he obtained wisdom. And Christ answered and said, This teaching I gave are not from me, but from the Father who sent me. And Christ told them that if they want to know the source of his wisdom and the origin of his teaching, they should put what he taught them into practice. In your case, the little knowledge you acquire, you claim to have got it from school, or that you labored for it. You will even forget to acknowledge God, knowing fully that you came into this world with nothing and will depart with nothing. During the time of Christ, he did not claim the words he spoke, the words, the works he did, the things he owned to be his, but he attributed everything to having come from the Father, when you are before him, he tells you it is the Father who is seeing you. When he speaks, he said 
it is the Father who speaks. When he moves, he said, it is the Father who moves. Anything he did, he gave the glory to the Father. When the Jews told him that it was stated that when Christ would come, no one will know him, his parents, and in fact, where he will come from, but you, we know, as the son of Joseph. Christ asked them, do you say him that is sent by God blasphemed? If I tell you it is not God who sent me, then I am a liar. If right from now you are in oneness with God as Christ did, you will not have any problem and you will have eternal glory. You will not quarrel nor fight or get annoyed and will stop asking questions over certain happenings. Let our golden text be read again. Golden text. John chapter 12 verses 44 to 46. Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. And he that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. I am come a light into the world, that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. Brethren, have you seen what is written there? Christ came to reveal his oneness with God. He came to let us know that anything done by him is directly done by God the Father. But as for you, instead of following after this oneness, you go about telling lies that it is you who do one thing or the other. Have you seen how Christ shouted, that anyone who believes in me believes not in me but the Father who sent me. For I came only as a light into the world so that whoever sees me have eternal life. But you speak individually and abstract yourself from God. And because of this you cannot accomplish any good thing. The word is God, and if you are one with God, he will therefore do everything for you. If he does not speak, then you will not speak. And should any man believe your words, he believes the word of God. If anyone sees you, he is seeing the Father. If anyone gives you anything, he is giving to the Father. And when you give out, know that you are giving to the Father. This particular gospel has it that anything you do should be attributed to the Father. Your slogan should be, the Father gives, the Father takes, the Father owns, the Father works and does everything. And once you deviate from this gospel, then you will be engulfed in darkness. Anyone who receives you, receives God the Father, who sent you. And if anyone hates you, then he hates God. So do not bother yourself. Brethren, anytime you wake up to speak, it is the word of God you should discuss. You tell people, to love, to show mercy, to be kind, to be patient, to be humble and meek. And if anyone abide in these words, he or she is abiding in the words of God. You are witnesses to the fact that once you wake up to go and preach to people, the moment you kneel down and kowtow, the Father will fill you with the words to impart to the people. The Father will be the one to preach the words, not you. 
just as he has said that you should not bother about what you will say when arrested in his name that he will give you what you must say do not seek to open the book for reference sake for he will speak on your behalf he is the one who preaches and prays the one who testifies and you are only a channel where he passes through this means that you are in the father and the father is in you it is the father who owns the money you give to people he is the one who prays for people and preaches and if anyone should do anything to you it is the father such a thing is being done to therefore do not quarrel with any person every day i give the words and i know it is the father who is doing this so whether you accept the words or not i am not bothered because they are not mine whatever utterances you make i have no problem because it is the father you are doing that too why do you not attribute every glory to the father does it mean he is too small for the glory it is this oneness that the father has asked me to teach you do not do anything again on your own when christ sent ananias to go to the house of cornelius and pray for saul ananias wanted to refuse on the grounds that the man was after the christians but christ told him not to refuse because saul was a chosen vessel to carry the gospel to the gentiles and ananias went and told saul about his mission that is what exactly you should be doing if you are given 10 naira to give somebody immediately you arrive there tell him god sent me to bring this money to you and you will not encounter problems you are his servants therefore do not do anything on your own you do not have anything what you are given or what you give is not yours the father does not give you anything rather he is giving himself and he does not take anything from you but from himself it is for this reason that when christ was always talking about the father philip told him to show them the father once you give every glory to the father your listeners will have a strong zeal to know the father they will believe in the father and this will mean that you have revealed the father you should always refer the golden text you should always refer to the golden text at your spare time beloved it is said that a stroke of the cane is sufficient for the wise he who has ears let him hear may god bless his holy words amen end of quote peace in the name of our lord jesus christ amen thank you father